Once upon a time, the animals in a farm were left with no food. The little red hen decided to wander around the field to look for something to eat. She first went next to the cow. Will you come with me around the field to find something to eat? No, I won't. It's too hot. I can't be bothered to walk. She then went next to the pig. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't come. It's too hot and I can't be bothered to move. Later then, went next to the dog. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't. It's too hot and I can't walk when it's hot. And in the end, went next to the duck. Will you come with me to find something to eat? No, I can't. It's too hot. I can't get out of the water. When nobody bothered to come with her, the hen decided to leave the farm on her own. As she walked, she found some wheat grains on the ground. She was very happy. She returned to the farm. She decided to plant the wheat grains. She thought that her friends would help her. Cow, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I already told you it's too hot. The hen went over to the pig. Pig, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. The weather is way too hot for this. She then went next to the dog. Dog, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, it's way too hot. And at last she went next to the duck. Hey, duck, I found some wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. I can't leave the water in this heat. Well, I'll plant them myself. When she saw that no one wanted to help her, she decided to plant them herself. Weeks had gone by, the rainy days had begun, the seeds had sprouted, but all the wild grass in the garden needed some cleaning. Who's going to help me clean the grass? It's too muddy now, I can't help you. I'm not up to it, I won't leave my spot. I'll get dirty, can't do it. Don't feel good today, I can't help. In that case, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen began to clean the wild grass amongst the sprouts. Not long after, the wheat began to grow. It was now time to harvest the ripe wheat. The hen went next to her friends and asked if they would help her harvest the crop. Hey cow, buddy! Wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. Hey pig, guess what? The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. I won't. Hey, my body dog. The wheat has grown. Will you come and help me harvest the crop? Who, me? Of course not. Hey, ducky ducky. The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? Of course I can't. Okay, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen worked till night time. She harvested the wheat kernels, one by one, all by herself. It was now time to turn the wheat to flour. Off she went to ask for help from her friends. Hey guys! We must grind the wheat to make flour. Who would like to help me? I can't help. It's time for me to give milk. I can't move from my spot. <laughs> I can't help either. It's snap time for me. I can't help at all. Can't help. Need to get into the water and cool down. The hen ground the wheat in the mill and turned it into flour. Now let's make some delicious bread. The hen went next to her friends and wanted to give them one last chance. Cow, I'm going to make bread. Would you like to... Help me? No, I can't. I'm in no situation to work. What about you, pig? <sighs> Not today. 
I'm too tired to help today. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. And besides, I don't know how to make bread. This time, the hen was very angry. All by herself, she went to the kitchen. First, she made bread with the flour she had grounded. Then she gave it a form. And at last, put it in the oven and waited for it to bake. After the amazing smell of the bread had spread, she took it out of the oven, went out to the garden and sat on the table. Later, called out to her friends. Hey guys, the bread is ready. Who would like to eat it with me? Seeing the amazing bread in front of the hen, in a flash they all went next to her. I want some. Oh, me too. Right when I'm so hungry. Great timing, hen. Hey, me too, hen. I love bread. Come on, let's eat. No, I can't. I can't. I did everything on my own. Only I deserve to eat it all on my own. With great appetite, the hen began to eat her bread but couldn't handle the fact that her friends were so hungry. From now on, if you promise to help, I will share my bread with you. All the farmyard animals were ashamed and sorry. They knew she was right. We, we promise you, hen, no more laziness. The hen knew her friends learned a good lesson, so she shared her bread with them. With an amazing appetite, they were now so happy with a full tummy. Once upon a time, right on the edge of the forest, lived a golden-haired girl. This golden-yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times, she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, baby bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around she began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees. Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a Big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. 
She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more, and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the Bear family, in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window. She saw three hot, steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled, "Anybody home?" When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table, there were three bowls of porridge: one big, one medium-sized, and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whoo! Her mouth burned, because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either, because it was too cold. It's too cold. Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Hmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one medium, and the last one was a small one. First, she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor, and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door, and here there were three beds: a big, a medium-sized, and a small one. First, she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her, and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size, but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size, and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries, and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge, and when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> They got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. 
Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. And is still sleeping in it. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to Baby Bear's crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop. And she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. <laughs>